when preachers in Massachusetts described this new land as a city on a hill, when it was described by our presidents as a beacon to other nations, as the light of the world, as an example. That, I think, is our greatest strength. President Clinton spoke at the Democratic National Convention, and he used a phrase that captured this better than anybody else's that I've heard. He said, through time, the world has always been more impressed by the power of our example than by the example of our power. And I think we see that dichotomy working itself out right now in the horrific news that is gradually becoming more and more apparent about the way in which the United States government handled people who were its prisoners. I'm on the Senate Intelligence Committee, so my exposure to this is deeper than most and longer than most, and I'm not at liberty to discuss any details, including things that are in the news because they haven't been confirmed yet. But it puts to a very fine point this question of who we are as Americans and what is our strength as a country. In the balance between applying techniques that we ourselves have defined as torture over and over again, when we prosecuted Japanese soldiers after World War II for waterboarding American aviators, when we prosecuted American soldiers in the Philippines for waterboarding Philippine insurgents, when we prosecuted as the Department of Justice a Texas sheriff for waterboarding suspects to get confessions out of them. Over and over again, it was established that waterboarding was torture. And we were willing to use that technique to gain increments of information. I will confess to you that I have yet to see a convincing presentation of any value obtained from that. I hear the former administration saying it. They're full of explanations of how it happened, but when you actually try to get down to cases and say, okay, what interrogation, what day, what statement, what connection, we have yet to be shown that. And given their record, some doubt is justified. But when you're willing to do that, you say something about America. And if there is a little advantage that is gained, and let's just, for purpose of hypothesis, say there is. Let's say that we gain some actionable intelligence information out of that technique. What was the cost? What was the cost? Well, the way I see it, and I hope the way many of you see it, is that if you step back from our globe and you look at it spinning in space and you see America's role on that globe as a place where hopes and dreams of humanity are gathered and have coalesced and we have the burden of carrying that forward and of representing it and of improving it in every generation so that what we do here becomes an example to the rest of the world. So when that earth spins and the sun lights up a new barrio, a new hamlet, a new village, a new tenement around this world, and the people occupying that village or hamlet or barrio or tenement step out into that new morning sun, they have hopes and expectations that they invest someplace. And when they invest them with us, when they say that's the kind of country that we want to move towards, it may be halting, it may be slow, it may be difficult, but that is where we want our compass pointed, then I think that that is a power that nothing else on this earth can match. We can't build a bomb, we can't create an army that is as powerful as that tide of human sentiment and appreciation and hope vested in this nation. And when we break it, when we degrade it, we have taken our most valuable and precious natural national asset, and we have put it at risk. And we have done so for what the Bible would call a mess of pottage. Mm -hmm.